Let's start. Hello and good morning, everyone, to our second Digital Health Talk Hanover. Our topic today is Future Rescue, the digitalization of rescue services. Our Health Talk series aims to connect the scene in Hanover all around digital health, as such, of course, including research and industry, share knowledge, present projects, and also maybe to find a partner. So maybe you are here to find one. And if you didn't know that yet, maybe there's still someone you might be looking for. And also we want to connect outside of Hanover to our international partners. And this is the reason why we do this in English today. My name is Cornelia Kerber and I'm project director at Hanover Impulse. Hanover Impulse is the economic development agency of Hanover and the reason, region. Our topic today, rescue, is someone that literally concerns all of us. There are around 10 million rescue services carried out every year in Germany, and every eighth person needs rapid assistance once a year. So talking about possible improvements and how digitalization can help in the future is something I'm very happy to have two guests, one coming from industry and one coming from research. Professor Thomas Diserno, you are from the Peter L. Reichert's Institute, the co-lead, and this complicated sounding name is actually the Institute of a Joint Institution of the Medical University Hospital of Hanover and the Technical University of Braunschweig. Warm welcome. Thank you. From industry, we have Alexander Meister from Graphmasters with us. Graphmasters is a company that is working on high advanced algorithms to help with traffic control and assess navigation. Alexander says that through his NUNAV technology, they can actually decrease the time to arrival by up to 50%. Warm welcome, Alexander. Hello, thank you very much. Thomas. When I first heard about rescue, I was thinking rescue, this has something to do with ambulance and uh, paramedics. But then when I listened to your talk yesterday at the Swiss Congress for uh, Rescue Medicine, I found that there's so much more involved. So the whole rescue chain involves different parts and gives a lot of possible area of for improvements uh, for the future. Could you give our audience an update and an overview, just a brief overview about what those areas are and where your research is actually focusing on to make an improvement. Yes, thank you very much for this invitation here. Um, the rescue chain, as you named it, starts with the alerting system. Uh, and uh, our belief is that in the near future, the alerting systems will be purely automatical. And then there is a responding system. Today, it's the operator, the disp uh, disponent uh, in the, the, um, the center. And, um, well, how to communicate between the human and the machine. Now, that means uh, uh, we want to fully digitize the um, information exchange between an alerting system, the responding system, the rescue system, and the curing system in the early stages of the hospital. And how would that look like if that would be fully digitalized? So today, um, I imagine someone takes up the phone and I'm calling and I'm saying, there is an emergency, please come. And then someone um, um, has the alarm and someone comes. Yes. How would it look like if it's digital? How it would, uh, well, the system, say a smart home. Yeah, and uh, we have uh, a person living alone in the smart home. The person is falling down and is not able to come up again. The home will notice that and the home will send an alert and uh, that alert will be a response by uh, a rescue team and while the rescue team is driving to this uh, a certain apartment they exchange a floor map so the rescue team knows how the apartment is built uh, in which room um, it happens and where to go in order to find this room most uh, um, uh, yeah most timely And maybe um, the apartment knows when the rescue team arrives. Um, they can exchange door opening codes or uh, other things. Yeah? And once uh, the patient is in the ambulance, uh, uh, we want to transfer um, 
uh, vital signs. Uh, maybe we can also transfer vital signs from the apartment to the rescue team. And uh, for all this, uh, we do not have interfaces uh, yet, and we do not have the appropriate coding of all this information. And that is uh, what we are developing. Um, also, um, how to make such a conversation between machine and machine secure, such that uh, health information of individuals are not uh, exposed to um, others. Wow. So this is a truly complete new way of how an emergency call would look like and how data gets transferred. Yes. If I'm now thinking about the actual way of the ambulance, what I was initially thinking, this is something where Alexander Meister comes in, that even though Graphmasters is not directly a company focusing on rescue, by being able to shorten the distance for the ambulance and the time by up to 50%, that yet would make a huge difference. Alexander, could you let us know how you actually make this possible and why Nunav is different than if I would just take my smartphone and bring up the classic maps function? Okay. Well, what you what you actually what you need to have is you need to have a navigation device in the palm of your hand, which can not only guide you as the driver of the ambulance where you have to go to and And actually knowing at what time you will be arriving at the scene, you will also need what we call a free road. And the free road, basically, what we did is we partnered up with one of the companies who is actually one of the first licensees at the 5G campus at the Deutsche Messe AG. Uh, it's SMEF. It's the SMEF AG. And actually, we help them to to achieve this uh, th this fifty uh, percent increase in arriving at any emergency scene in in a given city, and by doing so, we not only help the emergency vehicle to to let's say to to have a green light, we also enable all the other vehicles which are just in front of the emergency um, vehicle to get away, or simply by telling them do not drive on one of these streets because currently there is a situation with an ambulance going on. Mm -hmm. So for this, you need a navigation device, which is what we call fully equipped uh, in, a, in a collaborative way of doing intelligent uh, transport system. So it's a CITS device actually that you hold in your hands. And this CITS device Uh, together with our partner, is then connected to their services. So we know at any instance uh, where one of the ambulances is actually is, is going to and is heading and which corridor is it taking and how many traffic lights are they uh, crossing at a green light. So we, we try to make all this happen, yes. So this is also a lot of information that needs to be processed there and analyzed. I'm wondering now, How many participants on the road do you need with your system in order to make it work? Well, actually, you only need one person uh, on the system, and that's the ambulance, because the ambulance actually will generate a green wave throughout, throughout the corridors or throughout the roads that they will be taking. But of course, in order for an ambulance to arrive at a, on a smooth ride, let's say, to, to one of these green lights, you need other cars. Uh, just to 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 part away, and this is what we try to aim for. And and in this, I guess we need uh, we need a coverage of about five to ten percent in any city, in order to achieve this. But this is ongoing research, indeed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now I heard from both of you that by um, integrating data and um, analyzing. And, and really transferring ways of how we do things. On the one hand, now changing an emergency call to a smart setting, to changing the way of the ambulance into a smart setting. This, this is future room for improvement. Could both of you give a short glimpse of how a perfect rescue system would look like in the future? And maybe how you could even collaborate with each other for achieving this. Um, shall I start? Of course. <laughs> sure. yeah. okay. You're the expert. <laughs> so, um, well, in, in, in the vision I already um, pictured, yeah, um, I, I think there's a, um, 
after the call has been given, uh, a, a, a human-equipped uh, rescue team, maybe in future a robot-equipped rescue team. But anyway, a team needs to approach the site. Uh, and that is where Graphmasters uh, come in and uh, their smart system, uh, just to um, decrease the time between uh, alert and rescue. And uh, the time between this uh, we will use in order to exchange valuable information such that the rescue team is optimally prepared. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, that can be um, some, you know, um, video pictures at least. Yeah, How looks it, uh, the site? How is the site composed? How looks it? Uh, um, floor maps, uh, uh, door opening codes, mm -hmm. any other um, vital signs that might be recorded uh, in that smart uh, apartment uh, from a distance, that all needs to be transferred such that uh, the rescue team knows what to do. Alexander, what's your take on this? Well, my take on this is actually that uh, we all receive visitors pretty much every time that we ordered something uh, online and we get it delivered to the doors. And uh, these people are actually using already handheld devices to guide them uh, in, inside, uh, inside buildings. But of course, at least some of them, they do also uh, use a very intelligent navigation system on board to get them there. And I think this is, the, this is a joining up. So what you need to do is you need to have the device that tells you on the road um, where is the accident and how to get there by the fastest possible means. Uh, I can think of uh, if you have an inner city thing, then of course you need to have a green wave uh, flowing through where you just be able to be at the at the scene where you need to be very quickly, but if you think of an accident somewhere on the motorway, and then you need to actually know is it at the end of the of the accident scene or in the middle or at the beginning. So, so you really need different and device systems where you can tell one car, you go to the back, the other one, you go to the middle and the next one, you go in front. So you really need the conversion of the technologies and, and the different mm -hmm. uh, the different stakeholders into into one single intelligent system. Exactly, and there that are was some, something that I was thinking about the the pile up, the mass pile up. There's a good German word for it. It's a massenkarambolage. It's yeah. a bit tricky for an English person to uh, to get, get this. And yeah, exactly. So, so this but, is the situation that I tried to describe: massenkarambolage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you really, that, that's you have, called pile, pile up in English. Pile yeah, up. And so it's the pile an, up. Okay. Uh, excellent, uh, excellent example, actually. Um, um, the first rescue team arriving on the motorway uh, where a pile up is, yeah, you need to decide which car help, needs help first, which is a real bad and, and uh, um, yeah, heavy decision for these people. Yeah? However, if you think of uh, such a pile up, now, um, and all the sensors equipped, uh, the cars equipped with sensors. Um, um, the cars would know which one is having uh, uh, or um, appearing the most heavy forces and where um, the um, uh, occupants of the car are most badly hurt. Uh, so that information is available with our technology today, uh, but it cannot be transferred to the rescue team. And that is what we are working on. So this is a perfect setting for me that it sounds a collaboration between the two of you and the areas that we work on would make a lot of value and contribution to help in this uh, specific severe case uh, where with pileups, we have a lot of life-threatening situations usually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. when, when we think about the... Uh, the situation on a motorway. Also, quite frequently, Germany is a big transit country with north, south, east, west, uh, a lot of lorries, trucks driving around uh, outside of pandemic, also tourists. Um, not, not everyone that gets involved into an emergency is a, a German speaker. And this uh, em emergency call, um, how can technology help us to facilitate this? Well, um, that, that's obvious. Yeah, so right now you need uh, to have operation centers with human operators being able to understand the language. Uh, once you have the communication um, fully digitized, 
Now, then uh, you have uh, one language, now, which of course needs to be spoken, uh, say that way, by all the systems. Now, but this is uh, how um, our entire world, the digital world, is working. Now, you have standards and information is communicated based on those standards. And uh, there is no language problem anymore. That would be definitely a fantastic solution. Uh, I, I'm sticking a little bit to this international topic, topic and um, being able to communicate in different languages. I know that both of you are, of course, also collaborating internationally. First of all, maybe Alexander, referring to you, how, how is Graphmasters uh, working with, with different countries? And is there even something that would help you in your daily work right now, talking about international collaboration? Well, I mean, the, the international collaboration in, in traffic uh, is, is already occurring. So today we work out of five head offices. Uh, one of them is based in Australia, the other one in the UK. And then in some of the German speaking countries, uh, Switzerland and, uh, and Austria and Germany, of course. Um, yes, we, we, we do see an opportunity to, um, to make the jump. Uh, over the big pond um, let's go and see to the US or even Asia and um, of course traffic is not stopping at uh, at state borders um, uh, we currently have a big project with Cologne uh, with the Cologne trade fair where we actually help people to to get to the navigation uh, to the uh, vaccination center and uh, using a, a navigation device. So, um, and of course, yesterday I was visiting Frankfurt Oder for one of our pilots uh, in the emergency section and uh, they have a very close border with, with, with Poland and of course, emergency vehicles actually cross borders and they help out. So th this, is not only, this is not only about helping and, and speaking, this is really, this is, This is something bigger, and this is really something that we we'll look forward to. Yeah. Wow, oh, there's really a lot happening. Talking uh, about international collaboration, Thomas, uh, what yes. is part in, in your research? Well, research is, here, as you know, organized by um, some federations. So we have the German Association for Medical Informatics on the national level. And then there is the European Federation for Medical Information Informatics on the European level. And actually, there is the International Medical Informatics Association, the EMEA, on the international level. And, um, well, by accident, say it that way, <laughs> in a double meaning, um, I'm, I'm the German representative in the international uh, association. And um, on, uh, in 2018, we formed a working group within the EMEA on accident and emergency informatics. Yeah? And uh, there are researchers uh, um, distributed all over the world uh, collaborating and, and thinking of uh, how rescue services can be made more efficient in near future. So um, we are pretty good uh, connected internationally. Yeah? And regarding the terminology and standards, how to interchange the information, which is not only medical, yeah? it's, it's also floor maps and, and these things. However, we need to um, establish standards uh, that we learned in the past is very, very important. And that is done in collaboration with the WHO, the World Health Organization. Great, thank you for letting us know you there. Is there already a certain point where you would say it would make sense, sense for someone in the audience to reach out to you some part angle of a research project uh, where you would like to have more information on or um, or a best practice example from a different country that would make sense to be involved with? Well, uh, I learned in my uh, past as a researcher, uh, it's always good to talk with people. Uh, it's always good to get uh, uh, some idea of a different point of view to the same problem. So anybody, anybody is invited uh, to get in contact with me um, not tomorrow, maybe today or yesterday. So anytime, <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, this is uh, how research is working. Yeah, it's uh, uh, always we'll, interchanging and uh, discussing things with other people. So we will share the contact data later for this. Certainly, yes. Perfect. Yes, please. Uh, um, Alexander, I quickly want to come back to a project that you mentioned in Cologne. It doesn't have completely to do with rescue, but it's still in the bigger scene. So you mentioned the vaccination centers and that you're organizing the traffic. 
Uh, what is exactly happening there and how does uh, your technology facilitate the traffic flow to those centers? Could you briefly let us know what's happening there? Yeah, sure. So what we try to do with our navigation technology is we try to provide what we call a seamless customer journey for anybody to get from, from, its, yeah, from, from home to its, its destination. And what happens at Cologne a Trade Fair is really you, only, you go to a website and you say, I want to go to the vaccination center. And then very often you stumble across a card or you get a, you get a street name with the, with the number on it. And then, then you get into your car and then who decides which road that you're taking. And actually we take away all that hassle You simply scan, scan um, a QR code, then the NUNAV application will tell you through live traffic data where you have to go, which road you have to take. And once you are in nearly in front of, of the Cologne Trade Fair, there are also LED signs and the LED signs and the navigation device together, they will tell you now, please turn right or please turn to the left. And of course, a navigation device can also remind people what type of papers do they need uh, mm -hmm. to get the vaccinations and stuff like this. So this is really about making people more comfortable and a very, very tiny fraction of, of how we can actually help throughout this, throughout this uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I, I briefly summarize here a little that on the one hand, I as a a citizen can download the NUNAV app and use it for my own um, good means. And that, by the way, is uh, for free and is ad free as well. And if I'm a, a municipality or if I'm someone organizing big events and I want to organize a big traffic flow, then I can get in contact with you and design a big concept around it. Did I exactly. put this correctly? Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just to be sure here. Yeah, um, uh, um, maybe just to add, I, I don't think we have talked about this, but uh, I know. So um, uh, for the audience to explain the difference between the different navigation systems, yeah, um, uh, Google uh, always point us uh, uh, some detours. Yeah, and then the detour may be uh, also uh, overloaded. Uh, and the, the new and more intelligent system, uh, that, uh, um, optimizes uh, or not try to optimize your journey it tries to optimize the journey for everybody yeah um, and and uh, i think this is a, a, a advantage that people need to understand yeah, uh, so it's... at the end you're faster yeah uh, with optimization for everybody rather than just trying to uh, get the detour um, yeah one year so... uh, so it's called, it's, this is really, this is, I mean, this is my core. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's called the swarm intelligence. Uh, we call this balancing of traffic and keeping road authorities and road members and even, even people behind, behind the wheels. They are all on the same level on, based, based on the information that our algorithms or our system actually calculates. And this is what the NUNAV world really does for people. Yeah, it helps people to get faster from A to B. It helps the environment because we're, we're, more, we're using our infrastructure a lot, a lot better. And at the same time, uh, everybody gets to where he or she wants uh, faster. Yes. Right. This was a good summary. Both of you, Very, very brief, because we're unfortunately running out of time. If you had one wish from the audience or in general that helps your work, what would that be? Uh, I need to start. <laughs> one wish, I'm not prepared. <laughs> You're not prepared. Um, Alexander. No, uh, sorry about that, but uh, uh, one wish no, from the audience. Um, think of the idea and uh, um, be uh, friendly towards new technology. Thank you. Alexander, what about you? Yeah, I, I would hit in the same curve. So uh, just give new technology a chance. Reach out to us. Um, I'm I'm very happy to to listen to uh, to pretty much everything, and we will decide later what we're going to do together. <laughs> Thank you. On this note, we already said about contacting you. We can have the contact information now uh, coming in. Uh, both of you are available on their email. So am I, if you at home would like to reach out to me and uh, have questions or even be my guest, please get in touch. And then it's for me to say to both of those fantastic speakers, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, sharing your insight. It was 
So fascinating to see what is possible. And we all hope that rescue will improve in the future and will make all of our lives safer. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, what's coming up next? Uh, we say that before the game is after the game. We have, or after the game is before the game. The next digital health talk is on May 28th. It will be on DIGA and uh, health apps on prescription, a company's journey to health apps on prescription. There we have Catherine Heuch, a new CEO from Norway who wants to establish her migraine app in Germany and his counterpart, Diana Heinrichs, who is CEO of Lindera, an already established company uh, with health apps. And she's on top of it, board member of the Digital Health Association in Germany. Please join in. The registration is already open now on LinkedIn. And if you have missed any of the talks or if you want to review it again, share it with your colleagues, it's all available on YouTube. Thank you so much. And that until then, goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.